started creating interesting projects. Most of the things I did were either for school, you know, just to impress teachers, or I made a bunch of pranks on my family. Like one of the things I did was I created a little mint tin with some vibration motors in it. So when it got moved even the slightest amount, it would start vibrating like crazy. So. I mean, I did that stuff for a while when I was just learning how to make hardware devices like these. I eventually got tired of producing basically inconsequential devices, and then I started to get more into applying my technology to real world problems. So one of the things that I was making that was in inconsequential was just a little self-guiding robot. And this self-guiding robot uses an ultrasonic sensor to see, so what this does is it sends out a uh, a ping basically of sound and it bounces off and then returns back into the sensor and then the sensor measures the amount of time it took to do that and from that it can determine the objects or the robot's distance to an object in its path. So I kind of figured out that hey I'm using this one sensor to make a robot essentially see so why can't I correlate that same technology to help actually or to help blind people see who don't necessarily have that ability. Well, the way it works is it has an infrared sensor on it and this infrared sensor works in much the same way as an ultrasonic distance sensor or a way that BAT uses echolocation. It sends out um, a ping of light and then it measures how much of this light is transmitted back into the sensor. So from this, it can determine the distance of uh, this to an object. And then all this data is sent to a little microcontroller on the device. And the microcontroller will determine the distance and if something is within a specific range, it will then send a pulse to a vibration motor. And I've also included a light on it for demonstration purposes. So uh, I can show you this one right here. So you can see as I approach my hand closer to the sensor, it gets steadily and progressively faster. So the whole thing about this project is strength in numbers and that you could wear multiple of these over your body to uh, generate this advanced sensing capability. So the primary use of this device is for indoor spaces because it's easier for these infrared sensors to pick out walls than um, say, uh, I don't know, a pond. And it would also be better because um, it's hard for these sensors to determine what's beneath the user unless they wear it, for example, on the bottom of their shoe, which I haven't tested yet. But the actual hardware itself is about $5. And this is uh, consumer, pri or consumer prices for all these sensors I'm buying. If I was mm -hmm. going to do this wholesale, I'd probably get that down to like 3 or $2. Mm -hmm. Then the only other expensive component is the battery, which costs another 2 or $3. So I think the minimum number required to get full sensing capability would be about five or six sensors. So you could do it for basically less than $40. I was able to actually present these devices at a meeting of the National Federation of the Blind in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And at this meeting, I was fortunate enough to let actually actual blind and vision impaired people try out my device. Uh, they were Im immediately able to recognize uh, the capacity that these devices have to assist them in their daily lives. I mean, it's still in the development phase. I still have a lot of work left to do. Like, this isn't by far the finished product. I can make this quite a bit smaller, so I'm still working to do so. Um, I've been also looking into making a slightly more complex device than what is here. Uh, rather than using just a infrared sensor, I've been looking to put a camera on one of these devices and have a much more powerful microprocessor that has the ability to actually determine what the user is looking at or what is in front of the wearer of my device. So the camera would be able to take an image and then a a learning network would be able to determine that object. So say you were standing in front of a crosswalk, my device would be able to say, determine that, and then it could provide uh, a spoken feedback about what's in front of the wearer.